Hi guys, I've been a huge fan of Ian Hislop for a long time, so it was great to see him appear on the News Agents podcast alongside Lewis Goodall. So they spoke about a number of issues, but this one in particular is something very British. The idea that somebody from the upper classes is able to convince those of the working and middle classes that they are one of them. While this is all a bit funny, the core problem seems to be the media, which doesn't hold the likes of Boris Johnson, Jacob Rees-Mogg and Nigel Farage to account. Wonderful stuff, have a listen. Satirically, it's very useful because it's always terribly funny. I mean, the presentation of outsiders, I mean... If you want to take Trump, you know, he's a sort of New York playboy from an unbelievably rich family. Or Liz Truss this week. I mean, she described herself as the only conservative in the room at any given moment, at any given time, always fighting for true conservative values. Yes. Within the deep state, even though, of course, she herself had been an MP for 14 years. Yes. And, um, you know, but, uh, Boris Johnson um, saying, um, you know, I'm the sort of person you'd like to go down the pub with. What? What? An old Etonian? Um, who was at Oxford was from um, you know a very elite family who made his brother a lord. But it's, they get it, away with it. Yes, and it, it seems to me extraordinary um, that this. I mean, Nigel Farage, you know, lovely prep school boy, went into the city, outsider, <laughs> working class hero. Oh come on! I mean, the, these are bogus representations of the self. But in a way, then I think in a sort of let's say we in a broadly you know talk about it broadly the journalistic world we failed haven't we because in allowing them that that narrative has become very deeply embedded and Mm. many people find it very very hard to challenge and these people have used it tremendously but as you say in one sense it's absurd it's ridiculous i mean it's genuinely ridiculous i mean you know i myself interviewed jacob reese mogg recently i've interviewed him a few times quite a few times he's you know, suggested that I am a part of the kind of media political elite. Now, my father was a welder. His father (laughs) was, as we know, the former editor of the Times and and clearly a very august member of the British establishment. But I don't know whether these people think it or genuinely believe it or not. I think actually some of them do. But the fact that they're able to say things like that with a straight face and actually it's become so deeply embedded. Jacob Rees-Mogg literally says, Vox Populi, Vox Dei, (laughs) attempting to convince you of his his credentials (laughs) as a popular voice in Latin. And yet, and yet here we are. This has become a very deeply embedded part of our discourse. So true, so true. <laughs> it's so frustrating. You, because you have people, as pointed out here, who are not working class, but are somehow able to convince the working class that they are. That Jacob rees cares about ordinary people. Jacob rees understands ordinary people. Boris Johnson, the type of guy you'd like to go down the pub with. Jake, uh, Nigel Farage, a working class hero. These people are completely disconnected from the working class, but they're able to tap into this. They're able to speak two languages. They're able to speak the language of the working class, but they're also able to, Boris Johnson and Nigel Farage in particular, Jacob Rees-Mogg less so, but they're able to speak the language of the upper class too. So they're able to play two roles. They're able to play the role of the working class hero, but also the behind closed doors, they're able to speak to the richest in society and convince them, don't worry, I'm on your side. Now, of course, as was pointed out here by Lewis, this is a failure within the media. But I think this is a cultural issue. This is really something you really only see in Britain. You wouldn't be able to, I don't think you'd be able to get away with this in other parts of the world. Like if we look at France, for example, the French president wouldn't be able to act like a working class person. We, we, you know, class system is pretty much everywhere. I I think it's more the owner class and the and everyone else. But the idea of the class system is still something pretty much everywhere. But in Britain, there is this deference, and I'm not criticizing Britain. I'm just trying to observe it. But it seems to be there's this deference towards people because of the school they went to. Or because of the way they speak, you know, the title at the at the beginning of their name or the num the letters after their name, you know, the, uh, something in the U.S. you can see is how you know people communicate on a on a first name basis. Call me Joe. Call me Anne. Call me whatever. And it's not Doctor or the title in front of their name or Lord or Lady or whatever. And, and there's, uh, of course, if somebody is in the House of Lords, there's this idea that they are, they're special, there's some, th- something good about them. There's no evidence there. It's just a reinforced narrative. 
And unfortunately, the media don't call it out and the media don't push back on this. As Lewis Goodall pointed out, his father is a welder, was a welder, while Jacob Rees-Mogg's father was the head of the, was the editor of the Times newspaper. But Jacob Rees-Mogg is pointing the finger at the media and saying, you're part of the elite. And getting away with it. By the journal, the journalists are letting him get away with it. I don't know about Lewis Goodhall, but in general, these narratives are not challenged. And I think it comes down to this idea that, well, you're not supposed to challenge people like Boris Johnson or Jacob Rees-Mogg or Nigel Farage on these issues because there's something special about them. It's something in people's soul. It's something in people's hearts. It's not something rational. If you inject rationality into it, it completely collapses. There's no justification for saying that Jacob Rees-Mogg should be allowed to say X, Y, and Z. And if he was a member of the working class, well, this would be completely unacceptable. It's very strange. I find it fascinating, but it's, it's damaging to society because you're allowing people who are incompetent, liars, charlatans to get away with murder because of the way they speak or where they went to, where they went to school. Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot.